Beirut veteran, and he has a couple of words that he would like to share with us. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. First of all, I'd like to thank Cycle Fever TV for covering this uh, event here today. Um, second of all, I would like to just remind everybody that we are here to honor Sergeant Meekock Camaro. That is what brought us together here today. First, I'd like to have everybody raise whatever you're drinking or a toast to the fallen from Beirut to 41, 273, and also for every veteran that has given his life in defense of this country and who stands the line today. Now, a little bit about Sergeant Meekock Camaro. Meekock joined the Marine Corps in January 1981. He went to 1st Battalion down in Paris Island. Um, he graduated in March, I believe it was, March or April. And there he got his orders to Camp Lejeune. He was, went to infantry training school. He got assigned to 1st Battalion of Marines. In 1983, he got his orders to 22nd Marine, or 24th Marine Amphibious Unit to deploy to the Mediterranean to relieve my unit, the 22nd Marine Amphibious Unit, in Beirut, Lebanon. In 1983 was a very difficult year for all the Marines who served in Beirut. In April of 83, we had our embassy bombed by the Hezbollah terrorists, killed 16 Americans, wounding about 100 more, and countless Lebanese civilians who lost their lives and were wounded. 24th Mal came ashore in May of 83, relieving 22nd Mal, and so their deployment began. Before I get into that, Meekot had a sense of humor. He liked to be a jokester. He was also very dedicated to his wife and son. He would never do anything to dishonor them. He was a Marine's Marine, and he was a Marine all the way through. He lived and breathed the Marine Corps. He would do anything for his men, and his men would do anything for him. He was in tow company, he was in a tow platoon. He was a section leader, a second section of the tow platoon in Beirut. Or Dragons, excuse me, Dragons. Now, in October 1983, things were getting very, very dangerous in Beirut. We'd already taken uh, numerous wounded, numerous killed from artillery and mortar attacks, sniper fire. But on October 23rd, Sunday morning at 6.22, Mikat and 240 of his fellow Marine sailors and soldiers lost their lives in the largest terrorist attack at that time. The largest loss of Marine life since the invasion of Iwo Jima in 1945, and the largest loss of Marines in one single day since the Tet Offensive in Vietnam. 241 lives were cut short that morning when a truck carrying over 2,000 euro explosives blew up the battalion landing team building, headquarters. This was the largest non-nuclear explosion in the history of the war of, of modern warfare. We are here today to honor Mikot. We are also here to remember his fallen brothers who died with him. Mikot would have been 55 or 56 years old if he was still alive today. There's veterans here who knew Mikot better than I did. I unfortunately never had the honor to meet him personally. But knowing his sister and all of his friends, who I call my brothers, his memory will live on forever. And I'd like to thank Mission Barbecue for honoring Meekot here today and honoring all of us here today. And I hope you all enjoyed your meal. That's all I have. Thank you. One last thing. Excuse me, one last thing. It has been requested that all Beirut veterans and other veterans, or just Beirut veterans, Beirut veterans photo together before everybody leaves, and then we can probably get a photo with all, ve all veterans together as well. 
I have everybody please rise while they put Mikan's photo up on the wall. We were really honored to meet Elise at an honor flight event. Uh, I'm Ed Reardon, and this is uh, my wife Nancy. We were both on the board of directors of Honor Flight Southern Florida. And we were pleased to meet Elise at an event recently and learn about her mission, learn about Aurora. So, uh, on a recent honor flight, we took the cuts, photographed with us and uh, honored him on that flight, even though he couldn't join us personally, and brought his, his photograph to the Marine Corps Memorial with the, and placed it with a wreath. And also in uh, Mikach's uh, honor, I'd like to read a dedication I have here from, this is from uh, Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy, 7th District, Florida, United States Congress, Ms. Elise Kamara, Dear Ms. Kamara, at the request of Honor Flight Central Florida, this flag was flown over the United States Capitol in honor of Mekai Kamara, in recognition of his service in the United States Marine Corps and Beirut Lebanon. His service and sacrifices will never be forgotten. I commend Mr. Kamara's perseverance and unwavering dedication to duty. And I hope you enjoy this small token as an acknowledgement of his selfless service and my sincere appreciation. Sincerely, Stephanie Murphy, Member of Congress. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Thank you, Lisa, for sharing Nikon's picture with us. And as much as we do not like to see that wall get any larger, we are honored to have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you guys, and thank Michael Fever TV. Thank you, Leanne. You know, we're here for the, the one thing that brought us together is my brother. And I hate that he can't be here, but we're all here because of him. And we're all connected because of him. My girlfriends, my favorite brothers, the veterans here, the staff, we're all here this evening because my brother gets to be placed on the Gold Star wall. So I appreciate y'all not forgetting him. And it means a lot that each one of you guys took the time out of your day to come here. And to Jeff, who keeps me going, I'm very appreciative because I know it's not an easy job, but I just want to say <laughs> thank you guys so much, and I hope you get to enjoy the evening, and just know that my brother's up there looking out after all you guys, and he says thank you for being here to remember me. Could the Beirut veterans please come forward for a picture? One, seven.